Hey guys, in today's video, we're talking about Jared Witz, the 605k Ruckman from Gold Coast. So, Jared Witz, he was kind of the savior for a lot of people last year. I know Darcy, a lot of people started Darcy Cameron and he was out round one. And then a lot of people kind of sidewalked, downgraded to Witz, basically got saved and ended up being a a lot higher up in the rankings than everyone else. Did you end up having him? Yes, I did end up having him, having him a lot down, a lot later down the track when he was a lot more expensive and wasn't dishing up those massive scores that he was killing me with to start the year. I hated this man with a passion last year and everybody else who owned him because it wasn't even fair. We paid our big bucks for the set and forget. I paid for Gorn. I love Gorny. And then you got this guy who's just 300K, bails everybody out for picking Shrek. Every, we knew. We knew Shrek was an injury hazard. The guy cannot be trusted. And yet all of these guys still went with Shrek and then got bailed out with the pick of the century. Bloody Jared Witz, unbelievable. This guy started like a house on fire last year. Yeah, he had a real Mickey Mouse run for the first kind of half of the season. Um, ended up being about 600K when I got him in eventually and then tapered off a little bit in the second half. Um, do you want to talk about his scoring last year? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, he came off a really break off a breakout season where he averaged 109.5 before the buy. The guy was absolutely killing it. Um, he did taper off, like we mentioned, uh, in the second half of the year where he dropped his average down to a 98.4. Um, it, it was it was really good, I, I suppose, for all of the players to get on him so early. It was really cheap because he was coming off his ACL and he only managed to play the three games in the previous year, which really caused him to have a really cheap price going into last year. Um, a lot of his points came from hit outs to advantage because of he's such a pencil, a long pencil, just walking all over the field. Um, he's unable to really do much with the ball, apart from tap it down to one of the best midfields in the comp. Um, so this that type of scoring it was absolutely ridiculous. Um, just the way it was. Ruck contest, points, another stoppage. Points, another stoppage. Piss off! Stop it! I don't want to see it anymore. It was a pain to watch. I did everything I could to not watch Gold Coast games. Yeah, it really felt like he was versing, you know, everyone had players out. All the main Ruckman kind of were injured at the time that they were playing Gold Coast, alongside of the fact that, hey, he was the number one Ruck, and they don't really play two Rucks at Gold Coast. Maybe Chol kind of pinch hits. Maybe a couple of other people do the same thing, but it's not like a one-two, like a Gorn and Jackson or a Meek and Darcy, that kind of thing. No, he's well and truly shouldering the entire ruck load just about there at the Suns, and that's sort of what allowed him to have, you know, 13 scores over 100 last year mm. and some really high ce a really high ceiling of 154. Uh, and you would only expect that this sort of output would probably be uh, still on the cards getting in, heading into next into this coming season, given that because of his reliance on hit out to advantage, well, it definitely helps when you've got another preseason into Took who's who looks to be in absolutely ripping shape uh, over this preseason. Another preseason into Raul, another one into Anderson, and now all of a sudden you've got Flanders also getting his tires pumped up mm. by the Suns. So it's just just when you thought that the Suns midfield was looking good. Uh, guess what? It's looking even better, which could well and truly mean more hit outs to advantage, a full preseason full, full pre for wits. My goodness, is, could he really be? Could he really be the guy again this year? Oh, mate. Well, it's, it's definitely looking that way. And it really feels like as well, as you've mentioned, um, the midfield getting stronger. If the likes of Raul can kind of play a full good season, he's going to get so many points from scoring change. It's going to be crazy, you know. And then Ben King as well coming back, adding up a really nice target in that forward line. Imagine Wits to Tom Green, pass off to like a Tuke Miller, kick down to Ben King. Oh, my gosh, boy. He's, he's going to go Witt, massive. How can Wits tap the Tom Green? Oh, that's true. To Matt Rowe. <laughs> 
<laughs> to Matt Rowell, quick handball out to a Took or to a Noah Anderson down the mm. throat of King. Uh, will be great for our scoring on for our super coach scores, absolutely. Uh, but as we mentioned, though, you know, it wasn't all sunshine and rainbows for the man. He did drop mm-hmm. his average by over 20 points after the bye. Um, and he had some, he had a couple of low scores in the 60s, which is definitely not something that you want to pay $600,000 for. You trade him in for, for big, big bucks, and then he drops out a couple of 60s on you. It's not something that you want to see. Now, Wits is starting around that $600,000 mark, so it, it can be a bit nerve-wracking, um, especially mm. if he's up against a couple of really good Ruckmen that are both going to wear him down. And it just seems to be that there are more teams out there this year that are going to play two Ruckman um, that could really, I suppose, chip away at him. But, you know, he has had another preseason under his belt. So really only time will tell, I suppose, how how those things, you know, juggle up. Yeah. I mean, the one good thing about him, similar to a Gorn, is that he's not terrible in the forward line. You know, you can take a mark sometimes. And he kind of showed that a little bit last year if not kicking a goal in the forward line, at least kind of setting someone up for it. So he's not completely useless as opposed to some other Ruckman there in the AFL. Um, I totally agree that he did kind of fall off a little bit in that second half. I think just endurance kind of hit him pretty hard as well. I don't think he's going to be a sub risk, like getting subbed out, but maybe they'll play someone else as like a a really good coverage Ruckman. I can totally see a troll coming in and being like, well, Ben King's there now. He's going to be the number one target. Maybe you come off the bench and kind of allow Wits to rest forward and take a tiny bit of that scoring there. Um, just see what happens. Yeah, that's definitely a wait and see from, from that perspective. And also, there's no real value in the pick at this point, um, mm. considering that he's at 600, you know, just over $600,000, um, you know, priced at 110. So, look, you're really going to be paying up for him. You're paying premium, um, but what you're paying for, I suppose, is that set and forget sort of side of side of the game where you're going to pick him. He's going to be the number one ruck. He's going to be the prime target. He's not going to be subbed out, as you say, um, mm. and you don't have to worry about that spot for the rest of the year. I think we're seeing quite a few people have him and Marshall. Uh, if not him, then an English who has also sh- showed a massive, uh, massive ceiling. But I think we're seeing a lot of Wits and Wits and Marshall in the ruck for that reason. Yeah, definitely. I know there's a lot of talk about someone like a Darcy Cameron who we might cover a little bit later. Um, these players in the preseason who you're, you're a bit worried about starting them and they're already coming up with preseason injuries. So from all reports, Wits looks like he's dominating at the moment, kind of coming to it really fit, which is fantastic. And you know Gold Coast are going to be pushing higher up the ladder as well or at least wanting to, you know, push for finals, which is probably, I think it's like the first time ever they've done that. Um, I really, I I totally agree with you with the starting price. It's one of the few things that is a major bonus for picking wits. Yes, he could end up being the number one and you pick him to be the number one in the position. You know, I think he was one of the few Ruckman last year who averaged over 100. But if the pick does tend to falter a little bit, you can downgrade him. You can sideways to anyone and not have to change the structure in your teams, as opposed to if you pick a Darcy Cameron or, or a you know, God forbid, a Marshall, those type of players, if they get injured or something, you're going to have to trade out another player to generate some cash to actually be able to upgrade to these guys. Whereas Wits comes in, he's the most expensive. He can just downgrade to anybody. Or you can just downgrade all the way down to the man, the myth, the legend that is Big Sammy Draper, mate. And then you're winning. You're laughing. You got number one so rucking there, happens. and you got all that money saved up. Yeah, of course. It's a see. It's a it's a see what happens there, I suppose. Mm. But you know, having your team set up in a way that is structurally sound, whilst also accommodating for the most expensive ruckman, oh, it hundred percent sets you up to have a lot of flexibility moving forward. Uh, and, mm. and has you best equipped to handle all of the chaos that will happen during the year. I mean, no one could have foreseen the late out to Shrek, to Sean Darcy, uh, after the start of round one had already happened. Uh, and ha- all of the good Ruckman were gone, essentially. So it, it's the, <laughs> crazier things have happened, right? Um, and if your team is set up in a way that you can have the top Ruckman uh, as, as your R1, then you've done a great job, I think, with your starting team. Yeah, definitely. I guess the question is, Joe, um, is he in your team at the moment? Are you considering him? What's your plans? 
I am considering him, and yes, he is in my team at the moment. Uh, I just think the set and forget, I think he's probably going to be, the, if not number one, the number two ruck for the year in terms mm. of the scoring output. And I just think it's, you know, being able to shore up a number one position for the line for 600K, I think is, is still good value, a good price, I think, to pay. What about you? Um, he's, you know, he's been in and out, like you're saying. At the moment, he's R1. Um, it's looking like he might keep the position, just kind of, I'm a bit scared this year. The sub rule really kind of hurts and having a number one ruck who probably won't get subbed out, who isn't kind of coming in with an injury cloud at, at the moment, um, really shores up the pick for me. So he's there. As we've said, we can always downgrade him during the season if we have to. Yeah, 100%. So, guys, thanks for watching the Center Bounce today, tonight, wherever you guys are watching this from and your time zone. This was our discussion on the number one Ruckman from the Gold Coast Suns, Jared Witts. Please mm -hmm. like, share, subscribe, all that jazz, and hit that notification bell because we are pumping out the content as usual. We're also going to be adding in some different videos in amongst all of these player reviews. Uh, sort of diversifying our things and giving you more of what you want to see. Uh, anything you got to say, Big J? Um, just join up for our Super Coach group. Well, I'll, I'll put the link into the video in the description. Um, if you join, we've got some amazing prizes there that you guys can win. There's a jersey, there's some tickets, an AFL store voucher. Um, and yeah, guys, just remember, we do all the hard work so you don't have to. Bye for now.